Hello, everybody. <laughs> I am getting ready to start a gift for someone, and I'm going to make a beautiful embossed bracelet for a very dear friend of mine who's having a birthday. So what I've got here, in case you want to try to attempt this yourself, which I know a lot of you will, and I am excited about that. So what I've got today is um, the leather, which you can see here is just this beautiful, it's a cowhide, but it's embossed to look like uh, alligator skin. And I just thought this was beautiful. So he's got a couple other bracelets that I've made for him. And both of those are black deer hide. So I thought I decided I'd do something different this time. Um, and then what I'm going to back it in is this beautiful deer hide in chocolate brown. And the reason why I back 99% of my bracelets in deer hide is because of the suppleness of it. This stuff feels like butter. <laughs> it feels like butter. Butter on your skin. <laughs> so I usually uh, use a deer hide to back most of my bracelets in. Uh, not sure if I'm going to use this side showing or this one, but we'll know when I get further down the road. The other things that um, you will need if you decide to do a task like this is a ruler a pair of scissors, some sinew of some color. Most of it is black. Sometimes you can get brown or you can get a color like this, kind of a, a golden color. But in this case, I don't want such a contrast. So I am going to use the black artificial sinew. You will need a, um, what, ah, let me get it undone there. A hole punch but you want the little bitty the tiniest little punch hole you can get the tiniest one uh, because once you um, twist the sinew it's going to get small and so you don't want really big holes so you want the smallest leather punch hole you can get and then you will need one of these which is a uh, leather cutter you can see it's got a little thing on the back here. I'm going to pop it. This thing is so old. Well, I'm telling you that. <laughs> okay, here it is. You hold it. Uh, you punch this in, and it holds the blade out right here. Okay, I'll <laughs> get it right in a minute. Um, this is made by Olfa. It's a rotary cutter, and... Uh, this is what I use to cut my leather. You can change the blades out and um, keep them really sharp so it's not quite as hard to cut your leather. But this is what I use to cut. And then you will also need a clasp of some kind. And on this bracelet, I usually use a Sam Brown closure on my bracelets, but this time I'm gonna do something different. And I call, the, I call it a T-bar where it kinda you push it up and it comes out like so. And if you'll notice, it's got little screws on it right there. And that's what screws down onto your leather. Uh, so you'll need something um, like what you work on your glasses with to be able to have something small enough to go in those screws. But um, anyway, so I'm going to use this clasp for the closure on it. The last thing you will need is something to cut your leather on because if you're going to use the the, the uh, rotary cutter it will absolutely tear up everything. So what I did went to a sewing shop or Walmart or anywhere like that and I got me a rotary mat is what this is. Got a rotary mat and the beautiful thing about this is it has the ruler on it, the inches, you've got squares. You can see where I've cut so many things on it. This is the second one I've been through. <laughs> but uh, but you can measure precisely where your uh, leather needs to be cut. So let me scoot this up here like this. Okay, so we'll, we'll look at this line right here. So if I was going to cut 
this piece right here, I could line it up precisely with that line, precisely. And then you would use your ruler to make the clean cut on it. So I would set it down like this and bump it up against the uh, yellow line as close as possible. And then I would take my rotary cutter and I would cut straight down this line right here, just all the way down and it'll make it a very clean edge. So you'll need something like this to uh, cut on. Okay, so we are ready to go. I'm gonna go cut my leather so you don't have to watch my desk shake around and I'll be back. Okay, I'm going to show you now where I'm at in the project. I've got my back cut here, and I've got my front cut here. They are exactly the same size, as you can see, exactly. And that's what you wanna go. You don't want a lot of overlap of one or the other piece. You want them to fit as snugly on top of each other as possible. Um, with this, I usually do uh, a one inch width. I usually do the width of my ruler for uh, men's bracelets because it just seems to work beautifully with their wrists. <laughs> so, but in this case, because of this little, um, clasp that I'm using, you can see I've got to put the leather down on the inside of it. So I had to cut my leather just a little bit smaller than the inside of this because it's got to fit in there and the screws right here have to screw down on the leather. So I took a piece and I kind of measured it out. Let me do this one. It's a little easier to do right here measured it out and it sticks inside the clasp right there sticks inside and then the little screws on the top you will screw down onto the leather so that's what holds it in the clasp so there you go that's how that works so if you're going to use a clasp like this i call it a t-bar clasp it may have another professional name but <laughs> Anyway, it is what it is. Um, make sure that your leather is cut just the right width to fit inside that little hole right there. Okay, and I also, um, this little screwdriver right here came out of my glasses case. And um, you can, it's perfect for little tiny things like this, perfect for them. So if you can go get an eyeglass kit it will save you a world of headache trying to screw and unscrew these little tiny things right here. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to glue these two pieces together. I am going to use an E6000 glue because you can use that on leather. You can also use a leather glue if you want a specific leather glue. And I do use this as well. It's called Echo Flow. I do use this also. Uh, but on this particular piece, I am going to use the E6000 today. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue these two pieces together and uh, I'll be back. Okay, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here. I'm at the tail end of gluing the two pieces together. So I'm gonna break off with my little tool here. I got like a little toothpick type needle and I took a big glob of the glue and I'm placing it on the, in between the pieces. I am spreading it out. And anytime you're working with a piece of leather that's embossed, make sure that you get all the little bitty holes filled in there because otherwise, or as least close to it as you can, otherwise um, it, it's gonna have little gaps in it when you start uh, stitching it down. But anyway, there's one little section and I need just a little bit more and to get this side. And so you can see what I'm doing here. 
And uh, you don't want it so thick that when you press the leather together that it oozes out of the sides. You're gonna have some of that, but you shouldn't have a ton of it. So, you know, it should be something you should be able to get off with your finger. All right, I took the excess off. And now I'm just gonna gently uh, press that down just like that with my finger, not real hard, just, just a gentle pat. And I'm gonna go all the way down, just like that. All right. And I'm gonna pick it up and make sure I've got all the little pieces, the little, these little holes underneath, make sure they're all mashed down really good. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry for maybe uh, 15, 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna come back and uh, curve the edges here on both sides. And I'll show you what I do with that in just a few. Okay, so I've let this dry for just a little bit. It will cure completely overnight. Um, so, you know, that, that will be a good thing. But right now we're gonna go ahead and it's dried enough that we can cut the corners. So what I'm gonna do is take my scissors, make sure your scissors are sharp, otherwise you'll have um, jagged edges. So what I do is I'm just gonna uh, cut a little curve right there and a little curve right there with my scissors. I'm telling you guys to have sharp scissors and mine aren't sharp. <laughs> Isn't that the way it goes? <laughs> anyway, um, this cow hide's a little tougher to cut than the deer hide. So be patient with yourself when you're doing this and um, practice, practice, practice the cuts. Uh, and the more you practice, the, the more precise they'll get. Okay, and on this side, we're gonna do the same. And I'm just doing the, the corner and I'm kind of curving as I'm cutting um, to make just a little bit of a rounded edge. Okay, so I've got both corners cut, as you can see. They're both kind of rounded off on the edges like that. This is also the same way I do my chokers, my uh, Southwestern or native chokers. I do them the same way when I do the ties on the back. Um, so, all right, let's test this little thing and see if it fits in here. I am going to take the screws out of this real quick. And don't lose your screws because, oh my goodness. You've been a world of hurt. Because <laughs> finding something to replace those are going to be pretty, pretty uh, difficult. But, all right, let me get this out real quick. All right, so I've got both screws out. Let me move that right there. Then what I'm going to do, just to make sure that it fits, I'm going to take the open end here and I'm going to stick this end in it. Yes, it fits. You can see it inside there, maybe. Hopefully you can see it. Okay. Now, what I don't want to do is push the leather all the way up. You, you want to keep it down. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, you don't want to push the leather all the way up to the top because the uh, bar, this part of it, will not go through the clasp right there because the bar has to fit inside that little hole. And if the leather's pushed all the way up, there's no room for it. So you want the leather pushed up just far enough that it's on this part of the bar right here inside. And then there's little screws on the back right there that you will screw them down right there. Okay. All right. I'll get back with you in just a moment. Okay. The next thing we are going to do is punch the holes in this. 
and I have done this so long that I can do it without a ruler. However, if you're new at it, um, you can get a little marker uh, that you can see on the leather. Uh, if it's a lighter color leather, maybe a pencil. If it's a dark leather like this, maybe a, a silver marker. Um, but these holes on, on this little guy is really, really tiny. It's probably one of the smallest ones I've ever seen. So it's tiny. So I'm going to, if you're going to be doing this for the first time, <laughs> what you will do is, um, figure out where you want to start. And I usually start at the end of the bracelet on the corner is usually where I start, but take your marker and every so many little marks on your ruler, you're gonna make a dot. So, so you can see it better, we'll start here. So like you'll make a dot there, dot, 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 all the way down on your leather. You may wanna do it every other one. Depends on how wide you want the stitch to be. Um, mine winds up being about every other one, like I would have a, a hole here and then a hole here. Um, so I, it's about, I'd say it looks like maybe a 16th, 8th or 16th apart. Uh, but that'll help you. If you get a scrap piece of leather and practice uh, doing it, you'll get very proficient at it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start punching holes. I'm trying to get here where you can see it and where I can see it too, and that's kind of difficult to do. I'm going to do it on the back since the leather's uh, shiny and I can see it a little better. All right, let me start on the corner. Make sure I'm in the frame for you guys. I just made the corner. All right, I'm gonna do this so I'm, you're not gonna sit here and watch me punch every hole because that would be boring. But anyway, I don't know if you can see or not, but right there, you can see the the with the part that I've done mine. So I'm gonna do mine all the way around, just like that, and you finish yours, and I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, I got all my holes punched. Can you see them there all the way around? Uh, and don't get discouraged if your holes are not this even. I have been doing this for a long time, so just give yourself a break. Get some uh, really cheap leather somewhere and just practice with hole punching. That's all it takes. It's just a little practice. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is the sinew where we're going to uh, stitch around here. So what I've got here is some black sinew, and this is how I measure mine off because you're going to be stitching just a whip stitch like this all the way around, just a whip stitch. And it takes up space. So you wanna make sure that you don't run out of uh, sinew while you're stitching. So what I do is I take my sinew and I measure it out like this, maybe four times the length, uh, three to four times the length of the bracelet. So one, two, three, four, and it's not exact. I have some left over here because I would rather have too much than not enough because you cannot go back. It's a lot more difficult to make the stitches look uniform and like they've not been interrupted. So just, um, this is not extremely expensive. So don't, don't cut yourself short, okay? So the next thing you're gonna do is take this and you're going to kind of twist it like this between your fingers because it's kind of fat. See how it's kind of fat? So you're gonna twist it between your fingers like this. And you're gonna make the thread a little thinner. That's all you're doing with this. It's just making it a little bit thinner than what it is. 
and you can see it's making a real thin line. That's what we want. So, um, and it doesn't take long, just kind of pull it with your other hand as you're going. And it's not gonna be exact. So don't worry about it, because when you start stitching, it's going to look fantastic. All right, I'm trying to do this in really quick. And I'm gonna keep pulling it. This is a good workout for your hands too. <laughs> anyway. Okay, and there we are at the end, voila. Okay, we are back. We are about to stitch this little puppy up right here. And I'm just using a basic, kind of a heavy gauge needle here, just a basic needle, something with a fairly large eye so that my thread uh, sinew can go through there. You're gonna thread it in and pull it down about uh, three inches maybe or so. That way it won't come unthreaded as you're stitching. Now there are leather needles. There are things like this that are curved that kind of help it go through like that. But um, I wasn't taught using one of these. Uh, I kind of do thin things in orthodox sometimes. <laughs> Um, I was taught by native people while I was traveling on the road for about six to eight years. And so sometimes you learn to do things without the latest and greatest gadget that's out there. And so I just wasn't taught with the latest and greatest gadgets. And um, simplicity is, is kind of my MO. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start on a corner right here. And I'm just gonna pull it through like this. Pull it all the way through. Leave about the same amount on the end, maybe two to three inches. And then you're gonna do a whip stitch. You're gonna go under, pull it through. Guide it with your finger. Next one under, pull it through. under, pull it through, and I'm going to do one more, and then I will get back with you because I'm sure you will be bored to tears watching me stitch this whole entire bracelet. <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys practice and work on yours, and I'll be back in a minute. Ouch, ouch, I gotta stop for a minute. Ha ha ha. Well, casualties of the job. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> it's a little harder to stitch, but we'll keep moving with this one. <laughs> I bet you can't see a thing I'm doing now. Oh my goodness. I can't hardly see what I'm doing for the Band-Aid. Oh my goodness. All right, I am down to the end here. You can see I have stitched it all the way around. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not because it's pretty dark, the leather's dark, but I've got it stitched all the way around. And I'm down here on the end where the two uh, pieces are loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie just a basic knot in it. Like that. That's one loop. Make two loops. Okay, so that's your basic knot in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle and I am going to run this thread right here because you can see they're kind of telling you which direction they want to go. This one wants to go this way. This one wants to go down this way, kind of like the corn bead necklace that we did the other day. Um, so this one is going to 
be run back through this these stitches right here i'm going to run this piece back underneath these stitches right here and i'm going to come around the edge as far as i can uh you know it's not a real long piece left so that's another reason why to not skimp on your sinew make sure you measure out enough plus some um, it will make it a lot easier to finish off and then this side let me twist him back up again i am going to run this thread right here back underneath these stitches right here as far down as i can and that's the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to try to show it to you on camera but we'll see what happens okay so i've gotten the first thread i've gotten it pulled back through hopefully you can see that back through underneath the existing threads right here now i'm back over here on this side I've, i'm pulling it back through underneath the existing stitch so i'm going to try to push that through i've gone through about four stitches it's a little tough there we go all right I'll take my needle out and you can see I have run both stitches back through underneath the stitch. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this <clears throat> right next to it and then I'm going to cut the other thread right there. Push that little edge down okay so we finished off the thread <clears throat> okay the next thing you're going to do is take a Bic lighter of some kind or a lighter of any kind i'm using Bic. um doesn't matter <laughs> they're cheap so i can get a package of three for a little or nothing so with sinew what you want to do is you want to uh finish off this edge and you also want to burn off any uh, little tiny edges of leather that may be just kind of hangers on that makes it look not quite as clean and crisp. So you're going to start at the top <clears throat> and you're going to burn that edge just barely right there. Push down the little knot and then you're going to go around the edges. I'm blowing off the lighter if you're wondering what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, I'm going to continue on down the side right here. I'm going to turn it and make the corner. Come on down the side. And then I'm gonna finish this edge right here and it's also going to seal the sinew because the sinew has kind of a, um, uh, a waxy feel to it. And um, that waxy feel kind of makes it uh, loose. It'll make it, the thread will slide. I was trying to get the right word again, the thread will slide. So by burning it off, you're burning off just that light layer of waxy on the outside, which sets the stitch. It keeps it from coming undone. So right there is where I cut it. So I'm gonna burn that and come around here. And then I smooth it with my finger like that. Smooth a little knot. All right. 
So now you have burnt off all the, the rough edges to it and you've got a beautiful piece of leather backed with another beautiful piece of leather. The next thing we're going to do is put the clasp on and you will be ready to wear it. Be back in just a second. Okay, so I got uh, the clasp on. Uh, this end of it, you can see, uh, is what goes hooks in. So there was nothing we had to worry about on this end. So I pushed the leather all the way to the end here. I pushed it all the way in and then screwed my little screws in. Uh, the screws, once you tighten them down, they will hold the leather in. You won't need to glue anything. They will hold. But when you're screwing these in, go very, very slowly and uh, just a little pressure on it, just enough that it will go in, but not your slide off of your um, screwdriver. <laughs> Anyway, I knew I'd think about what it was in a minute. <laughs> but anyway, um, but just a little pressure because you don't want to damage the the little uh, screws. Now, on this end is where it hooks in. So remember, I don't know if you can see it, but remember, do not push the leather all the way to the end. You've got to leave a hole right here so that the bar can go through. So your leather is only pushed through about halfway and you can see it in there. You can see the where the leather is inside there. So um, you shouldn't make that mistake. So once you get it in there, flip it over and there's your little screws right there. Screw them down extremely tightly, but gently as you're going. Don't wanna strip anything. So here we go, this hooks in like this and clamps down. All right, <laughs> there we go. Bracelet is complete, complete and ready for someone's birthday. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed sharing with you. Um, practice, practice. We'll see you on the next project. Bye.